Welcome back, Fiber Friends, to another episode of Fleece Talk. So today in Fleece Talk, I did want to bust some common myths about what makes a good fleece. I do think that in the right hands, a lot of fleeces can be made into beautiful yarns. And I do think that you need to choose a fleece based on what you want to make with it. Um, and not necessarily how much you love the way the fleece looks before you process it. Well, I say this as somebody who often buys a fleece uh, based on what it looks like. Whether that be color or lock structure, um, there's lots of different reasons that I've been drawn across the room to a fleece. I do think that if you put a little bit more thought into what your wool has been used for historically, um, you can end up making an item that can last a lot longer than, say, if you use one of the more traditional fine wools like a merino. On the other end, you should probably, in most cases, not be purchasing a long wool to make your kids a set of hats. While the long wools can look beautiful, woven, knitted, crocheted up, I do think that they're more appropriate for outer garments. Um, I do love making bags with them as well. But I do think that there are a lot of quote-unquote medium or down-like um, not traditional fine wools that are next to head or next to skin, uh, soft, like this clun forest. Another common myth is that the only kind of fleeces that hand spinners are interested in are ones with a ton of crimp, or that fleeces that have a ton of crimp are the only good fleeces. As you can clearly see here, the top sample of Rambouillet has a lot more crimp to it than this lower sample of Clun Forest. However, I would happily wear both of these as a hat or a scarf. 